It's a Texas Turkey Day tradition as the Aggies and the Longhorns lock horns here in College Station. After the fans have feasted, now the dessert, a high stakes football game. And Colt McCoy insists the focus is not on championships ahead, but against the one rival he has a losing record against. He'll try to find Jordan Shipley, one of the nation's top receivers tonight. He's been unstoppable this season. Gerard Johnson, the playmaking quarterback for the Aggies, has been very tough at home. And the nation's sack leader, Von Miller, wants to get after Colt McCoy tonight. Can the Aggies bring an upset and spoil Texas's national championship hopes? An old rivalry renewed tonight. The underdog Aggies storm the field, not through a column of members of the Corps waving their 12th man towels. Always an emotional scene for the Aggies at home against their arch rivals from Texas. The Longhorns, which a lot more to play for you'd have to feel, but pride, bragging rights. There's plenty to play for on the Aggies side as well. Over the years, Texas has dominated, but as we said a few minutes ago, two of the last three have gone to Texas A&M. They went up to Austin in 2006 and spoiled senior day. The only time Mack Brown has lost on senior day, Stephen McGee, a touchdown run, a hard-fought 12-7 victory. Colt McCoy knocked around, picked up a few times, and knocked out of the game. As a freshman, Franchoni still was unable to hold on to his job despite the big win. Then in 07, the Aggies in a shootout. Now fake field goal. T.J. Sanders touchdown run. They built a big lead. McCoy could not bring the team back. Picked off. Lost a couple of fumbles. It was horns down right here at Kyle Field, 38-30. to Now a year ago, Texas got revenge. A big 40-point beat down, the biggest margin in 110 years. But Mac Brown knows the challenge is big tonight. And he's with Aaron Andrews. Thanks, Chris. Mac, first of all, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Big 12 championship next week. Everybody's already speculating, who are you going to play in the national championship? So, Mac, what have you told your team about focusing on tonight? Well, first, happy Thanksgiving to everybody, Aaron. What a wonderful day. We've told them that this game's been played for 116 years, and it matters to everybody in the state of Texas and everybody in the country that likes college football is watching it tonight. And you're 11-0, so why not have some fun and play? Why is it so difficult to play here at Kyle Field, Mac? Why is it what? It's so difficult to play here at Kyle Field. Well, I, I, I think any time you go on the road and there's a great fan base, a lot of emotion, it makes it difficult to play. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, Chris. Aaron, you had to repeat the question. That says a lot why it's so <laughs> tough to play right here. The 12th man making noise, and Mike Sherman hoping his team can feed off all that emotion. Six and five in his second year, the former Green Bay Packer head coach. Texas won the toss and deferred. So AM will get the ball to start this game. Texas, some small tweaks to the uniform tonight. Nike Pro Combat Unis. Mac Brown wouldn't let him go crazy. Just a couple of little touches to honor some of the past championship teams. The number above the Longhorn is something new for tonight. Ryan Swope and Bradley Stevens. Back deep. And here's Justin Tucker to boot it away. It is Swope. A little crease, and he barrels out near the 30-yard line. So we'll see Gerard Johnson. Jesse mentioned hasn't thrown an interception in any of the six home games, and 17 touchdown passes have been very sharp here at Kyle Field. And, and I think the fact you go back into the season where he went 225 times before he threw an interception, that's a Big 12 record. So he's not prone to making a lot of mistakes. Like Sherman said, he's one of the most coachable quarterbacks he's ever coached. He's going to have to apply all that coaching here tonight. And hand off on the first play. And Hammering ahead for a very short gain is Kristen Michael, the true freshman. Impact players for AM, Uzoma Wachiku. We talked about this offense needs explosive plays. Easy Wachiku. He's averaging 19 yards per catch. He's the big deep play threat. Well, this guy here has a 99 yard kickoff return for a touchdown. You got to have big plays. He's got the ability to do it. And Von Miller, the junior, pass rushing defensive end, will be in McCoy's face, he hopes, all night. On second down, Johnson swings it out. But an immediate hit from the far side of Swope by Earl Thomas. Finalist for the Thorpe Award, combining with Aaron Williams. I think one of the things that stands out to me about this Texas team, when you watch them on defense, boy, oh boy, are they fast. They, they just don't give you, they make up the room when you talk about playing in space. They limit the amount of space that you can play in. Will Muschamp's defense, number one in the country on opponents' third down plays, only convert 26%. 
Johnson, well protected. Fires down the sideline and has a man wide open. Jeff Fuller. Hello. It's Fuller, who broke a bone in his leg and missed four and a half games this season, but is now, as you can tell, 100%. He beat Chucky Brown. And that'll keep this crowd in it. That'll keep it loud for the Texas offense. As Randy Bullock tacks on the extra point. You talk about this explosive Aggie offense, 88 plays of over 20 yards, 74 of those coming from freshmen and sophomores. This is one of them. So off the quarter, look what happens, Jesse. There's the blitz that comes from the top. They look at the guy. They don't go back. It's not calculated well in the secondary, and it's, an, it's, an, it's a broken play. It's a coverage bust. You saw Shockey Brown look back at Earl Thomas. He thought he had safety help over top. Strong safety, Blake Gideon came on pressure. AM was able to pick it up, and that was just pitch and catch for Gerard Johnson. You can tell the arm strength, he can make plays with his leg. This is a, a very talented quarterback that's a big part of Mike Sherman's rebuilding efforts. Wow. A big haymaker from the Aggies against the big favorites here tonight. Talked about how good that third down defense was of Will Muschamp in Texas. Third and long, not only do you convert, but you take it to the house. Uh, you know what that old saying, you know, you live and die by a blitz. And when you do that and you mess things up in the secondary, you pay the price. So McCoy will get the football for the first time. Down by seven as Malcolm Williams and Jordan Shipley are back deep. This is Shipley. And he's hammered short of the 20. Kenny Brown down on the coverage. And here comes Colton McCoy, all-time leader. Wins for a starting quarterback in Division 1A. But again, that 1-2 and two record against a and And he's taken his lumps. He's had his turnovers against these guys. Well, in the last five games, Colton McCoy is playing the best football of his life. He's completed 77% of his passes during that stretch. This is his third 3,000-yard season. Obvious Heisman contender, but a first down throw. He finds Shipley, but a very short gain. Jordan Pugh, leader of that secondary on the tackle. Jordan Shipley is the first Politnikoff finalist here at Texas. He's already set a single season record for most receiving yards this year. And Trey Newton is healthy. They've got a stable of backs back there producing 153 a game on the ground. We've seen Thomas, who has seven interceptions on the year. So a four-yard gain on first down. McCoy takes off. Has a crease. And Colt McCoy slides safely into the 38-yard line. Hasn't been that active as a runner this season, but we'll see him take off tonight. Uh, you know what happens? Watch over here on the back side here. Watch what happens when Colt McCoy gets pressed out of the pocket. Miller runs right around, right? So you got to have somebody accounting. McCoy. An offensive coordinator, Greg Davis, told us how valuable it was to have a quarterback that could move the chains once or twice a game with his feet. Picked up 14. Maggie show blitz. They pick it up. McCoy fires far side and complete at midfield. It's Malcolm Williams. Get up to a slow start this season. He's come on quickly and been an impact player. And Texas goes, hurry up. McCoy took a shot there. After the throw, no flag. Mm. And that was very late. Trey Newton finds a crease. We'll try to get as many hits on McCoy tonight. Chris, they I wouldn't know. mind drawing a flag, I don't think. Chris, I know, you, I know you've been here. Jesse, do you get the feel for why it's hard to play at Kyle Field? No question. I walked on the field yesterday, Craig, just during the daytime. It's imposing when you stand on that field when it's empty. Imagine what's going through Colt McCoy's mind right now. He's moving toward that giant end zone. Again, McCoy takes off on second down. Ready for the sidelines and the first down marker. We talked about loss a couple of years ago here. 
This was actually 2006. Knocked around late, knocked out of the game. He had a tough day. His younger brother, Case McCoy, watching. Very upset. Caught on camera that day. So McCoy's second run produces a first down at the Aggie 40. Play action. Well covered on the sidelines and broken up over there. Justin McQueen, the backup corner, knocked it away. Williams, the intended receiver. Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator here, is outstanding about mixing things up. Jesse, the last play was a design quarterback run. You get the slip on the field, he's just dialing up different numbers there. Tell you what, this AM secondary has their work cut out for him tonight. There is not one player in that secondary that can lock one of the Texas wide receivers down. They're going to play big zones. They have to be communicating so they don't give up any big plays. Now they're real thin at corner, aren't they? Aggie show pressure up the middle. Drop off. Here's a screen. And they swarm behind the line. Kirkendall dropped for a loss. You know what? When you talk about getting hats to it, watch inside and watch what these guys figure out where the screen's going, Jesse. How many helmets get to the ball? And it's the right play call for Texas. They anticipated the blitz, so they throw the quick screen, but great pursuit and great speed by Eddie Brown. Make that tackle. Boy, is it loud on third and 11. Pressure picked up. Completion, but well short of the marker. Terrence Frederick him up to stick Shipley fourth down well they say Joe Kynes a D coordinator said, coordinator says Frederick has the nerves of a corner he doesn't mind getting out there and he throws his body he, if he misses it's a big play and that's a great job by the secondary there they're just reading that pattern and reacting to it and right there Frederick sees Shipley go to the flat he reacts right away great instincts to make that tackle force a punt so the Horns march 44 yards in opening possession. And now Justin Tucker will try to pin the Aggies deep. It's a fake. And on the option, Tucker, the punter's got it. Loses the ball, doesn't get the first down. Trent Hunter wasn't fooled. And the gamble doesn't work. They were aware this is the part of the field you might see a fake. That's Nobody a in maroon fooled. <laughs> Aggies are hitting tonight, and they're leading 7-0. Our Cheese It Real fan spotlight focuses on yell practice. Their version of a pep rally began in 1913, usually held at midnight before Texas games, but it was held at 8 o'clock last night, Mike Sherman addressing the crowd. And this football team tomorrow, although it's young, is going to fight, it's going to scratch, it's going to crawl. It's going against a good football team in the University of Texas. But the University of Texas doesn't have the 12th man. We do. Wow. Both man fired up, and this is another tradition, Craig. Your daughter went to school here. Yeah, she promised and me, Dad, I'll never do yeah, that, though. I'll bet. <laughs> <laughs> when the Aggies oh, score, man. you get to kiss your date. Already some smooching going on here. Oh, my God. As the Aggies do a 70 yard touchdown pass, open the scoring. Fake doesn't work, and they're back on offense. Johnson fires far side. You can see the arm strength is Ryan Tannehill, who's a backup quarterback and a fine athlete, as out near midfield. What a start for Johnson. Really a nice job play calling by offensive coordinator Nolan Cromwell here using the play action, try to freeze the linebackers in the second level. And that's just a perfect throw by Gerard Johnson. It's now to Cyrus Gray. Had a crease, chose to cut it outside, and the flag is down in the holding zone. Gray and Kristen Michael, it's kind of a tailback tandem. Personal foul, chop block, 74, offense, 15-yard penalty, still first down. You got Lee Grimes, the senior tackle, costly penalty. But Gry, uh, Gray and, and Kristen, although it's spelled like Christine, mom wanted a girl, 
Saturday to stick with the name. Those guys both coming off 100 yard games against Baylor Saturday. You, you know why I like their style against this Texas defense? Because they, they run past the arm tackles. They're quick. You don't require your offensive lineman to hold a big block up there for a long time. The numbers suggest that AM has to be able to run the ball tonight. They're 0 and 5 this year when they run for less than 200 yards in a game. Yeah, but they're going against the number one rush defense in the country. <laughs> exactly. Henley makes it first and 25. Johnson, a shovel pass inside to Gray. He's going nowhere. He lose another yard. I've already seen the, the costly 15-yard penalty, the kind of thing that the Aggies can't afford tonight. They're one of the worst teams in the country. Penalty yards per game, and the 15-yarder has created a big hole for Johnson here. Five receivers on second and 25. They slip it out to Gray in the flat. Not much. You know, you know, Chris, but Nolan Cromwell, the OC, was telling us about this in the meeting today. He goes, you know, it's okay to punt. We can't make mistakes, right? We can't have the turnovers. So sometimes you just got to be, be cautious. Yeah, Craig. He talked about trying to avoid negative plays. And by that, he meant, hey, you know what? Sometimes it might be a running back getting a handoff and just fighting and squirming back to the line of scrimmage just to try to keep things manageable. Oh, a big touchdown pass on third and long last time. They need 19 yards here. Texas rushing just three. So Johnson heading for the sidelines, and they'll scamper out, and they'll send the punt around. You saw the type of athlete that Gerard Johnson is right there. He made Sergio Kittle completely miss. What about the job Will Muschamp has done with this defense? Since he's been here, all 24 opponents they've played, have been held under their season scoring averages. Unbelievable. Coach in waiting whenever Mac Brown retires, Muschamp will take over. Texas has blocked three punts this year. They don't get to that one, and a fair catch for Shipley who's brought a couple back to the end zone. Shipley and McCoy, childhood buddies, go back to work, but it's the Aggies with the early seven zip lead. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Applebee's. It's a whole new neighborhood. And in part by the Mercedes-Benz E-Class, one of the most advanced automobiles on the planet. My baby's at home. Happy Thanksgiving. That one was for you. Okay. Love you. Taylor Love you. and Haley Black. That's Mike Black, our spotter up here. Team James. Beaten by Team Palmer, a single touchdown late. Yeah, one and one. Great. We're one and one. I, I, I won last year. You won this year. The pressure was on you. You had to come back. We were up 4-3. I thought the officiating was shaky today. Filing a formal complaint tomorrow. <laughs> it's not going to stick. <laughs> Important thing is nobody got hurt. Let's be honest. Amen. Second possession for the Longhorns, and this is Newton bouncing it. Trey Newton banging off, folks, and he gets a first down at the 45. You know, Trey Newton is, it, it, we're going to talk about him tonight, and he's the beneficiary of a lot of good stuff. But, man, when you talk about that offensive line up there, Jesse, together, 126 career starts. It's the O-line that gives these backs the room. And Matt Brown told us he thinks Trey Newton may be the most complete of the running backs, whether it's running the football or catching it out of the backfield. Made the comparison to Emmett Smith, didn't he? Yeah. He banged off a blocker there. He went to a, a run, and this is Cody Johnson, the big 250-pounder. The sophomore knocked down for no game. Yeah. When I look at these two big these programs from afar, I think it is the offensive line at UT that separates them. Real significant difference. I think it's probably on both lines. I think if you look at offensive line and defensive line for Texas, that's the big difference between these two schools right now. It's an experienced Texas O line. 127 starts between them, but they haven't been a great run blocking line. Good protection from McCoy and an incompletion. The low throw and Dan Buckner, the flex tight end, couldn't handle it. Third and 11. Now this, this tight end position for the University of Texas has been a, an Achilles heel for them this year. They've had to overcome a lot of injuries at that position. Buckner's trying to step up and fill the hole. And a 
defense that has really struggled against good passing offenses this season, trying to get off the field right here. Fozzie Whitaker in the backfield to the right of McCoy. McCoy takes off and gets near the first down at the 46 of AM. It'll be very close. What Depends can you say? Spot. What can you say about Colt McCoy tonight running the football so early? He's already converted two first downs running it. They're going to hurry up. It's fourth down. McCoy and a gamble early in the game. Fighting forward. I believe they'll give him the first end of the 45. So up tempo for Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator. And I imagine Mac Brown was in on that decision as well. No question about it. Doing anything you can right now, Craig, to try to take the 12th man out of this. I think Mac is telling you right now as a team, we, we know we have a fight on our hands. We can't allow uh, our team to punt it and give it back to them. Too much momentum there. They didn't quiet them down much. <laughs> Everybody on their feet here. Boy, taking a shot downfield, looking for Williams and just overthrew him. He tried to beat Stephen Terrell, the true freshman corner. Football continues tomorrow, ESPN2, the backyard brawl. Pittsburgh and West Virginia in prime time. Can the Panthers get past this hurdle on the road? Set up the showdown with Cincinnati and Boise State against rival Nevada on the blue rug at 10 o'clock Eastern. How about Nevada, the first team ever in the football bowl subdivision to have three players to rush for a thousand yards? Blue carpet has been 24 straight though wins for Boise State. Well, I think it's going to 25. And second and 10, Aggies being pressured, but a short completion. And fighting to break free is Williams. Queen tackle the middle, set up third and five. Early on, very impressed with the Aggies secondary is playing, Jesse. They're playing tight and doing a good job of block, uh, tackling in the open. An open space tackling has been critical tonight for this secondary, no question about it. Yet another big third down here for Texas. I believe they will take two plays to get these five yards. Blitz again, short completion again. And breaking free is Buckner. See what a good athlete Buckner is. Six foot four, big target, 12 yard gain. Two coming off the corner there, Jesse. You know, you, you've got to make sure somebody accounts for one body receiver if you're going to bring somebody from them. And the coaching staff earlier this year, Craig, they took Dan Buckner as a wide receiver, moved him to the flex tight end position. He's been lethal this year from that spot. 40, 40 catches now. Yeah. And first down, McCoy fires far side. Chickley makes a man miss and then takes a huge shot after a seven-yard gain. Spencer Neely, defensive lineman, got out there and whacked him. They're going to hurry up. You know what, this is, you know, you talk about Jordan Shipley in open space. That's like his punt return skills there when he makes you miss that first guy. Up tempo, quick handoff to Newton. He tries the left side, first down near the 16. You know what's amazing about this Texas offense? They've been a machine all year. Coming into tonight, they've scored on 49% of their drives. They just march up and down the field at will. They are moving into a sea of noise, but executing very well right now. Aggies showing pressure off the corner. They bring it. McCoy picks it up. And Scampers inside the 10, tripped up as he crossed the sideline. Good read by the veteran quarterback. Saw the pressure to his right. This is a design quarterback run. This is twice now that they've run that. And what you're going to see is the back that leads up in there and blocks on the linebacker. Design quarterback run all the way. Paul McCoy has been so good in this area of the field. 12 touchdown passes, only one pick this year in the red zone. You see Von Miller, number 40, blasting upfield. Thinking sack, and they cut inside of him with the run. There's a whistle. Just before the snap and a false start. So for the first time, the crowd a factor here for the Texas right, so offense. False start. Offense, number 78. Five-yard penalty. Still second. It's David Snow. Back up center. Uncharacteristic of Texas to make a mistake in the red zone. I mean, the 48 out of 51 down here 
35 of those are touchdowns. They usually get six. Tied for the sixth best red zone offense in the country. Second and eight now. Pressure again. McCoy fires toward the end zone. Touchdown as he hooks up one more time with Jordan Shipley. Bolitnikov finalist, one of the top receivers in the country, makes his 10th touchdown reception of the season as he beat Justin McQueen. Well, McQueen had two guys there. It was him and the sideline, so he's trying to pinch him and push him out there. You see McQueen on the inside, Jesse? Too much room for Jordan Shipley and Colt McCoy. And there's no defense for a perfect pass. Colt McCoy back shoulders his roommate Jordan Shipley, and that's just pitch and catch. These guys have been doing that their entire careers here at Texas. Hunter Lawrence sacks on the extra point. Shipley and McCoy both have younger brothers who are perhaps even more talented than their big brothers headed for Texas as the cycle continues here. McCoy to Shipley as even this game at seven. Welcome back. The Longhorns have tied it at seven late in the first quarter. This is the 10th anniversary of the tragedy here at AM, the building of the bonfire, November 99. 12 students were killed. That memorial with doorways pointing towards their hometowns. A poignant reminder of the loss of life here. A 65 foot high pile of logs collapsed near 3 a.m. Students were putting finishing touches on it. 27 were injured. And the AM players at the time. Rushing over there the following morning to help unpile those logs. And the NM family, which is already close, got even closer together that month. Pickoff return by Bradley Stevens, who breaks free out across the 30 with second effort. They have not had bonfire in that scope since then. Hope to some point bring it back. Really brought the two schools together, Craig. Mac Brown and, and Texas were yeah. trying to be helpful, whatever they could, reach down their hearts, and, and the Aggies were so appreciative. It, the rivalry hasn't been quite that bitter. Touched us all. Really, I, the whole state, regardless of affiliation, everybody was touched by it and uh, really, really feel and, and always think about the Aggies. The stretch play on Michael who lowers his head and picks up about four. Earl Thomas met him there. Hey, Coach, Mike Sherman of Texas A&M told us, you know, with all his experience in the NFL as a GM and a head coach with Green Bay, he believes in order to control a game, you have to run the football. There's a hand on Michael again. Dragged down at the 40. Keenan Robinson. It'll be third and four. Well, following up on that, I, I remember coming here in Mike Sherman's first spring watching them work out, and the offensive line was really a glaring concern. Last year, 80-something yards a game. They're up to 190 this year, but not even close to where Coach Sherman wants to take them. He'll recruit big offensive linemen. Empty backfield for Johnson on third and three. Texas rushing only four. Johnson hangs in the pocket, delivers a strike for a first down. Fitting it into a tight space to Jamie McCoy, the tight end. Third down, a very important part of this football game. Watch the feet of Gerard Johnson and his eyes. Jesse, he went right to where he knew the ball was going to go. And he put it only where his wide receiver could catch it. I mean, that's as good coverage you can have on a tight end slash wide receiver. And that's just another perfect throw from Gerard Johnson. There's a first down hand off to Michael. Nothing on the left side. If you check back with Reese Davis for Sports Center right now. Reese, happy Thanksgiving from all of us. Desmond will never strike the pose. I mean, every week they try to get him to strike the pose. He, ain't, he won't do it. <laughs> we'll do you it. saw Michael with the short game sets up another third and three. Again, empty backfield. 
See if Texas brings pressure this time. Didn't blitz in the last third down, and Johnson had plenty of time. Nope, they rush only three. Drop into his own, and it's batted down at the line. Big Lamar Houston, the senior who's the key to the defense, Muschamp says, breaks it up. He's really been playing well now in the last, last three games. Lamar Houston started his career as a defensive end. He moved to defensive tackle last year, doing a nice job seeing Gerard Johnson wind up, and there goes the hand right up in the air to bat it down. Every number you look at on Lamar Houston says he plays and lives in the backfield. Tackles for losses, pressure, sacks, and big numbers. I mean, he's always on the other side. And that's the first incompletion for Johnson after a six-for-six six start. So here's Ryan Epperson, the true freshman punter. Shipley standing inside his 10. They angle it away from Shipley, kick it very high. And takes a nice bounce for the Aggies. And McCoy will have to start inside his 10-yard line. Minute 10 to play in the first quarter. Well, the Applebee's weekend menu, Cincinnati against Illinois tomorrow noon on ABC. Talked about the Boise State Nevada game. Game day will be down in Gainesville for the Tebow Bow, the final home game for the Gator quarterback. Knowles trying to win a shootout. I imagine they don't like their chances of shutting down the Gators in that game that much. Well, E.J. Manuel playing quarterback now for Florida State. He's going to have his work cut out from against probably one of the best defenses in college football. Pressure off the edge and a short completion as Williams makes a man miss. He gets out near the 18-yard line. McQueen couldn't bring him down, and big Malcolm Williams showing his talent. Beauty of a quarterback who's seasoned and understands defense. The pressure from the right side. Where did he go, Jesse? Went to the left. Take it to Newton. McCoy keeps it. And Colt McCoy has a crease. We thought we'd see a lot more design runs from the Horns tonight than we've seen in the last few games. Yeah, offensive coordinator Greg Davis told us they'd hear about 10 to 13 design runs for Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy at this point already has six carries, though. I mean, he's running it a lot, Greg. But I, I really feel like that that's what makes Texas's offense so good. When you've got Colt McCoy running, I think he's faster than he's been. He's an excellent vision guy. He knows how to do it, and it adds that element that you can't defend. He's already run for four first downs. He's throwing on a first down far side at Shipley again as the Horns continue to work underneath against Terrence Frederick. And Cole McCoy running, you know, he did it more last year. 561 yeah. yards last year, which was the most in 20 years aside from Vince Young. Not so much this season. You know what, Chris? I think that's how you have fun as a football player. Remember early in the year he wasn't having the fun? I, I think when you run, it creates fun for you. And he's had his fun moments here in the first quarter, which expires. But the Aggies have had their moments, too. Big touchdown pass from Gerard Johnson just a minute 16 into this game. Lawrence on the move when we come back for quarter number two. In the first quarter, 119 yards total offense for Colt McCoy in our Enterprise Benicar drive recap. Shows a touchdown drive. Buckner with that drop there, but then McCoy got going. Shipley already has five catches. That was the big catch right there to Buckner. And then the touchdown connection. Shipley extending his Texas record for receiving yards in a season. Evo's guys began this drive at their nine-yard line. And as we start the second quarter, faces second and three at the 34. This is Newton. Cuts it back, takes a hit, no game. Maybe a yard, Matt Moss. He comes from El Cajon, California. Watched the Holiday Bowl a few years ago that we did out there against Cal. Didn't know anything about a &M. Got caught up in the spirit of the fans and decided this might be a place to play with my college football. Coach has told us he may be the most improved player in that entire defense. Maggie defense looking for a stop here on third and two. Horns just one of three on third down. McCoy keeps it again. And Colt McCoy racing up the middle of the field. Gone. Oh. 
65 yards. And number 12 is making a Heisman statement here tonight at Kyle Field in the early going. It is so important to maintain lane responsibility and integrity. When you're going against Colt McCoy running the ball, you'll see right here, watch whenever they get the ball to the line of scrimmage, they're spread out. They're not there. There's nobody in there. You know, the and has got to become responsible for Colt McCoy. You live by the blitz, and you'll die by the blitz. Lawrence makes it 14-7, and McCoy, one and two, again, against the Aggies in his career. The only conference rivalry he's got a losing record against is dialed in tonight. Very quickly, Texas on top by a touchdown. Watching ESPN's College Football Primetime presented by Applebee's, the Texas Longhorns visiting the Aggies of Texas A&M here in the Lone Star Showdown from Kyle Field in College Station. Now, due to time constraints, we're moving ahead in our coverage. It's year five for the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, all state making contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. And to date, all state has contributed more than $2.1 million in scholarship money. So here at Kyle Field, early second quarter, Gerard Johnson and the Aggies take over at their eight. Got to be careful here. Defense did their job. Offense trying to improve field position at the very least. And Johnson keeps it. And he has a crease. Runs through a tackle and has a first down at the 22. Their quarterback could run well, too. You see that athleticism from Gerard Johnson for a big guy, 6'5", over 240 pounds. His ability to get outside once he sees Earl Thomas bite inside. Absolutely. That's that quarterback zone read. How many times have we seen it work against over-aggressive defenses? Here's our first down handoff. Michael runs hard, lowers his pads, and collides with McElroy after about seven yards. Reese. Frog. We'll see how the Buffs respond against their rivals. Nebraska, of course, will meet Texas a week from Saturday in Dallas. The 12 championship game. Field. Third and one for the Aggies. Michael is the tailback. He's got it. He was hit behind the line, but fights for a first down. You see the passion by the true freshman, Kristen Michael. He realizes how big this game is. Playing a rival, he grew up around here. Short yardage and goal line, a little bit of a difference here. Michael got maybe a little more power run behind the pad level for this Aggie offense. And that's what you have to do. You have to break a tackle for a short yardage first down. Cyrus Gray replaces Michael in the game. And Johnson taking a shot downfield. He's got Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill, the sophomore who's the backup quarterback to Johnson, got deep up the middle on Keenan Robinson, the linebacker. And, and you know, watch what happens here. You've got, here he is, and this linebacker's gonna come over, Jesse. That's just not sound defense. And, and Gerard Johnson found the weakness. Well, they're asking Keenan Robinson to wall the inside post player. There's nothing wrong with that because it requires a perfect throw. But again, Gerard Johnson delivers exactly that. 36 yards, Johnson throwing again on first down, pulls it down, cuts inside, and Johnson just tripped up as he was pointed toward the end zone by Sam Acho. Very close to a even bigger run. Gerard Johnson playing within himself right now, very impressive, not trying to force the football. One of the things he's done much better this year, decision making, he tucks it and runs. Got eight yards. High formation, handout to Michael. First down, banging inside the Texas 15. Well, the number one rushing defense in the country coming in. Push backward. 
my formation says I'm coming at you downhill. I don't care if you're number one in the country in rush defense. I'm just going to bring my manhood right at you and test you. When was the last time you saw this D-line getting blown off the ball? They were only giving up 1.7 yards a carry coming into tonight. Jackson fires middle. Touchdown. Jeff Fuller. His second tonight. That's a pretty good answering drive by the Aggies. Terrible field position to start, and Johnson takes him right down the field. Yeah, more kissing. Come on. Come on. We missed the first he, one. He's looking for yeah, it. Where is it? He's looking this for one. <laughs> he's got two dates. Well, life is good. Little hesitation. Randy Bullock able to knock it through. There we go. Aggies already with 203 total yards. Two touchdowns for Johnson and a confused secondary again, Craig. Yeah, it's really obvious here what's going on. You've got two receivers. you got three back here, plus a linebacker from the inside. Fuller does not get pressed. No bump, no hands on him. A clean release. No linebacker drop. The windows cannot be that big in red zone defense, but give Gerard Johnson credit. He says, look, you want to give that to me? I will take that all night long. 92-yard touchdown drive in eight plays. This is Marquise Goodwin. And a true freshman wide receiver somersaults to the 30, flags down. Put Goodwin back as a kick return try to get a spark. He's got excellent speed. Holding during your turn, number 16. First major penalty for the Horns. It'll back him up with poor field position. For the Dick Sporting at NIT, season tip-off concludes Friday on ESPN. Number 13, Connecticut. Number 7, Duke in the championship game. Dick Sporting at NIT, season tip-off as part of Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. Schools are 4-4 four and four against each other all time. UConn's won the last four in a row. Aggie hoop team, by the way. A big win today over a ranked Clemson team in a preseason tournament. These folks are all thinking about chances at shocking Texas tonight. And McCoy's got to be careful here. Ball at the 12-yard line after the penalty. Trey Newton. It's been a running game that struggled to, to do much with the running backs. McCoy has a career high, 111 yards rushing, but the backs haven't gotten going. Yeah, but you know what? On that play there, that zone read, you're going to make sure defensively you stay at home backside and you force McCoy to hand it off and don't let McCoy run it. In the pocket, takes a shot downfield. Williams has it inside Aggie territory. A beautiful throw as they beat McQueen. Monster night for Williams so far. Coming into this game, the AM defense gave up 19 completions of over 30 yards. Craig, we pointed to this already. They're isolating Williams against these corners. He's just running by them all night. Only three rushers, five in the middle of the field, three deep. You can't let someone get behind you. Turn your hips and get your fanny back. 45-yard game for the Aggies, 41. Half-hearted fake to Newton. McCoy fires far side. Another completion. Spinning away is James Kirkendall. His second catch tonight. One thing Texas's offense has done so well this year is respond when other teams score. 26 times when the other team would score this year, Texas yeah. will come back 16 of them, score right away. And there's Frederick. You better get a shoe on, young man. He gets to the sidelines as they run a DB in to replace him. McCoy still got it. Oh, almost intercepted. He tried to throw it short, and Vaughn Miller, normally a pass rusher, dropped in coverage and had his hands on the ball. Have you ever seen a, res a player lose both shoes on one play? I've never. It looked like, what was going on? You're talking about coming out of your cut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that was something. So Miller very nearly a 
Chance at an interception, and now Newton on second down, barreling into the secondary, and Trey Newton for a first and goal. This football team is very resilient. Other teams score, and they come right back on the field as an offense, and they march right down the field. Watch, Jesse. They're so concerned with Colt McCoy. Two guys run right by him. They're tackling Colt McCoy, and they forgot that there's a running back. You have to be disciplined, responsible for your guy. You take your guy. The other guy will get his. Yeah, Newton ran through the arm tackle of Miller for 21 yards. McCoy rolling left. Cuts back. And he'll be dropped. That's the nation's sack leader. Von Miller was in there. It's been a real weakness for AM. Miller now has as many sacks this year as the entire Aggie defense had last year. He was playing linebacker. They turned him into what they call the jack position. They're allowing him to just line up and just get after the pass rusher. You see the speed he has on the edge. Being slowed down a little bit, though, with the quarterback zone read. He's got to be more mindful of the angles to McCoy. Five receivers. Aggies late in lining up on the left side. And a strike down the middle. Touchdown, Jordan Shipley, his second tonight. 14 yards. Opponents know it's coming. Every week it's the same thing. You know it all starts with Shipley. They just can't stop him. Jesse, this kind of looked like you today in flag football. <laughs> Two rushers, nine dropped into coverage, and somehow thread the needle through nine. Are you kidding me? Cole McCoy's not fooled. They show a pressure look. They drop back into zone. No big deal. He just goes through his progression and finds Shipley again. And McCoy, you know, even after the sack, still has 106 yards rushing. 14 of 21, a buck 72. You're watching ESPN's College Football Primetime, presented by Applebee's, the Texas Longhorns, visiting the Aggies of Texas A&M here in the Lone Star Showdown from Kyle Field in College Station. Now, due to time constraints, we're moving ahead in our coverage. Empty backfield on third and seven. Low snap. Pressure off the edge. Johnson spins away. Then it gets dropped. Got away from the first man, but Sam Acho eventually got him. Acho comes from the sideline. I mean, this is a long ways out there from the blitzing position, but it all starts because of a bad snap. You know, it just didn't get there. Kevin Matthews' ball was down low, and his eyes came off. That's what I was talking about earlier, guys. Gerard Johnson, that play is dead. You have to throw the football away. You see he was trying to reverse backfield again, and you're just taking an unnecessary loss that this team understood they cannot afford tonight. Eighth sack of the year for Acho. And Epperson with a short punt, very short punt. In traffic, the ball bounces, and now a scrum. Shipley came up. He wasn't able to get his blockers away from the ball, and the Aggies have it. So the first mistake of the night for Texas. And coming from one of the best players in America, Jordan Shipley usually does not make mistakes, comes up, feels the traffic and the pressure around him. Just, well, actually, it's not even Jordan Shipley. The ball hits his teammate that's on the ground. Looks like he wanted to fair catch this ball. He's got a teammate laying on the ground, does not know where he is. I don't really know if Jordan even could have made that catch. So the Aggies take over at the 36, and Johnson running on first down, just throws it away. It's a 25-yard punt, <laughs> short but effective. Yeah. Now a and in a great situation. Two and a half minutes left in the half, down by seven. But you have an opportunity to put some more points on the board right now. But, but I feel, I get that sense that that front four of Texas D-line is starting to crank it up. I've seen them in the backfield a lot more now. Second down handoff. Bit of Anthony Lewis, by the way, with a fumble recovery for a &M. But now it's third and long. You know, it, what's so tough about this Texas team to run about, it, the defensive line, when you look at these names, Sergio Kendall, Lamar Houston, Keiston Randall, Sam Macho, that might be at least three guys that are going to be playing on Sunday. Johnson again. Pressure. Fires complete. 
Heading back inside is Cyrus Gray. First down inside the 20. Gerard Johnson's feeling the pressure. He's going to be in the pocket. There's real no plausible reason for him to break, but he's respecting that defensive line, and he gets out. How about the throw? And this is his ability to create on the run. That is such a tough throw for a quarterback. Rolling to your left with the receiver coming to your right. Empty backfield on first down. Johnson fires underneath. And a short completion inside the 15 to Fuller. You see those feet, Jesse, how they're moving around back there, trying to go with his eyes, and that's what Nolan Crime Memorial said he was working on with him. Get the feeling Texas A&M wants to score here, but they do not want to give the football back to Texas. Johnson, looking left, fires, end zone, touchdown! The veteran of this receiving core, Howard Morrow. And the Aggies cash in the misplayed punt. You are seeing a really good quarterback showcase tonight. You know all about McCoy. The nation getting a good look at Gerard Johnson tonight. 13 for 15, a buck 99, and three touchdowns. That's more like it, no, young man. No, 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 no. That's the shootout tonight. That guy's having the night. But when it comes to playing football, Howard Morrow, number five. This is unbelievable. Watch how Morrow from the inside slot. He's going to get pressure here and here, but he's going to fight through it and come open late, and Johnson stayed with him. It's great patience by Johnson. He knows there's the window over the middle of the football field. <laughs> that was open? Field. He needs to wait for Morrow to clear it. But again, putting this ball only where his guy can get it. Morrow doing a great job high-pointing the football, strong hands. Gerard Johnson feeling it right now. Morrow's been laboring with a high ankle the last few weeks his third touchdown of the season and gerard johnson bright bright hopes for the aggies future he's got another year here with a bunch of young receivers they lose more but the rest of the crew is back gerard johnson today became the first texas a&m quarterback to ever throw for 3,000 yards in a season that's amazing yeah. already had the single season record coming into this game so minute 11 before halftime for McCoy to work with. And this is Goodwin. Marquise Goodwin. He's a world-class track athlete. Long jumper, sprinter. Gets around the corner to the 36. Well, Saturday, primetime football on ABC. Charlie Weiss and the Irish limp out to Stanford to take on Toby Gerhardt and the Cardinal with his status story one in that game and then Georgia and Georgia Tech as Paul Johnson's Jackets try to beat the dog for the second straight year and route to the ACC championship game. I think Charlie Wise, Notre Dame's got a really difficult situation. They need to make a move, but they don't want to fork out 15, 18 million bucks. And who's the guaranteed coach that you can bring in there? First down, McCoy flips it short. And a completion to Buckner. It's about seven yards. Texas all three timeouts as we move inside of a minute before halftime. 61% of Texas's scoring drives this year took three minutes or less. With all three timeouts right now, there's a lot of time to score for this offense. McCoy will scramble for a first down. Takes a shot as he crosses midfield. Kyle Mangum got him. 36 seconds now. Texas still with those three timeouts and not taking one. You got three of them over there. You can't carry them over, and now they'll they'll spend one. And that cost them six seconds right there. Well, we saw last weekend Les Miles and LSU. <laughs> there was a timeout that was not called. Cost yes. that team 17 seconds and probably a chance to at least win that football game. Clock management so critical towards the outcomes of games. I think, guys, we've seen, we watch so much football. It, it, it's really, as soon as you know you're going to start using them, save the clock. Don't let it work against you. you. You just have to have that strategy and philosophy. Call it now. I'm surprised they didn't take a timeout after that first completion, which was short. 
for the first down. And you see Johnson trying to build on just a monster first half, really a, a coming out party. And really doing a great job seeing the field. He looks poised. He's taking advantage of the mistakes of the Texas defense. And he's not just doing it with his, with his arm. He's doing it with his legs yeah. as well. And the Aggie secondary, I know that there's been a lot of yards put up on him so far, but we expected that. They've held up just enough to get Johnson the ball back. So Texas with 30 seconds and two timeouts. The first down at midfield. McCoy takes a shot. Taking a shot out of bounds. Who else? Jordan Shipley with his seventh catch of the first half. This for 21 yards. And, and, you know, as a receiver, when you run that route, and Shipley's done it now over 200 times with Colt McCoy, he knows for a fact where the spot is and where the ball's coming. It's a great route to run because not only do you get a big chunk of yards, you also stop the clock temporarily. Already in field goal range for Hunter Lawrence, but McCoy, he's thinking end zone, and he takes off and scampers out at the 20 with 18 seconds to play. Michael Hodges forced him out. Isn't it amazing how much yardage this Texas offense has gained so quickly? We just blinked a second ago. This drive started. They were way back in their own end. I, I want to give a shout-out right now to the left tackle at Texas, Adam Ulatoski. What an outstanding job he's doing over there right now with Von Miller. That dude is running hard and fast. Ulatoski sticking with him. Yeah, he's the old man, 24 years old. Stud left tackle. Second and three. McCoy fires middle, low throw, and a sliding catch at the five-yard line. Simply defenseless against Jordan Shipley. It's first and goal. 12 seconds to go, and Texas will spend their second timeout. You got to watch Jordan Shipley run this route the way he sets it up. It's unbelievable. Only a veteran. You'll see him at the top of your screen. You see him kind of peek left. All the defenders start looking that way. Sets himself up to run the in route. That's just a veteran move right there by a great wide receiver. Most receivers really don't take the time to do that. And the way it did, uh, can't see right there whether the it was a completion. Looks good there. I don't know. Ball may have shuffled just a little bit. The ball did hit the ground, but did he have it in his control when it bounced off the grass? But it wiggled just a little bit when he hit the ground. Of course, it has to be indisputable video evidence. It's not even reviewed yet. It's technically. It's a nice low throw protecting his wide receiver. It, it appears there that maybe the grass had helped. Yep. Here's the announcement. I thought we were going to hear a review. They decide not to. So Texas first and goal. Still a timeout. Again, this is where Colt McCoy has played his best football this season. In the red zone, he's been lights out. McCoy avoids the rush. Out of bounds. Working back near the pylon with Shipley. Just Eight kept, seconds now. Yeah, just kept working. Shipley kept working, and McCoy trying to give him time to get open. You see the buying of the time here. Shipley knows well, so well, where that sideline is. The throw takes him outside. Now, with eight seconds left, there's time for one more play. But if you're McCoy, you cannot scramble around and make this a long play. If you have it, throw it. If not, throw it away. Kick a field goal. Maggie's showing pressure. McCoy fires. End zone. Touchdown. James Kirkendall. With four seconds before halftime. What an answer to the Aggies' answer. You said, Craig, a and wants to score, but don't leave Colt time. Left him a little bit too much time. Justin McQueen, now this is the second time he's used the sideline as his friend. Look at the back shoulder throw. These Texas wide receivers and McCoy just are dialed in together. That's the second time we've seen a back shoulder throw for a touchdown from Colt McCoy. It's just big time. And again, you see the explosiveness of that offense. Mike Sherman team had momentum, but another poor second quarter for the AM defense. The Horns have scored 21 in the second. Halftime of ESPN's college football primetime from Kyle Field. Colt McCoy, 222 yards passing, 119 rushing as the Longhorns lead the Aggies, who are led by Gerard Down Johnson's three touchdown passes. Well, be sure to catch ESPN's college game day built by the Home Depot every Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Two hours of features, insight, news, analysis, and predictions getting you ready for the day's action. Back with the second half right after this. Welcome back for the second half here to College Station. Seven touchdowns, 643 yards of total offense. Another ball primetime presented by Applebee's, and Texas will get the ball to start this third quarter. Guys, I think we expected 
Texas to be productive against the Aggie defense that's really struggled. Didn't really expect for Texas's defense to struggle as much with AM's offense, but they've got some things to clean up in the second half. Yeah, they do, but you know what they've got going for them right now is Colt McCoy. You know, Colt McCoy has this offense and this football team. They've answered all the Aggies success. Gerard Johnson's played well, oh. but I think Colt McCoy, he's had a Heisman first half. You're right. Gerard Johnson has been able to answer. And this is like an old Western shootout here at the OK Corral between these two quarterbacks. Texas AM has to find something. It can stop this Texas offense. 398 yards in the first half. A lot of teams will be happy getting that after a game. The AM defense needs to slow this Texas offense down. And that would start right here. Longhorn's first possession of the second half. Two dangerous receivers, Marquise Goodwin, the freshman, and Malcolm Williams. We had a monster first half with 99 receiving yards. Both guys are back deep. And this is Goodwin. And the sprinter runs through an arm tackle, but is dropped at the 22 by Justin McQueen. A Home Depot coaching adjustments. Well, you know, and it is the defense of Texas A&M that we're going to focus on here in the second half. They've got to figure out an answer for Colt McCoy's running ability. That quarterback zone read, they're indecisive, Jesse. they got to make a decision and go get one or the other. I think the defensive line needs to do a better job when they engage with the offensive line. They need to find the football, shed the blocker, and then go pursue the football. They're not doing a good job locating who has the ball, and it's killed them in this first half. Pressure from the corner. A flag down. Coming off the edge too quickly was Williams, the linebacker, on the blitz. Short completion, but this will cost the Aggies five. Offside, defense number eight, five yard penalty. He's the quarterback, wide receiver turned linebacker, Eric Williams. Aaron? Chris, speaking of the Aggies defense, I had a chance to speak with their coordinator, Joe Kynes, coming out of the first half and he said this team just needs to push on through on defense you gotta make the play Joe Kynes feels like his D is really really close but he said close this isn't good enough you have to get it done you have to make the play and watches Newton on first and five carry for about four we like Joe Kynes but he's just an old country guy he's been a defensive coordinator forever but briefly they had coached at Arkansas but he's an entertaining cat huh I think the, the entertaining thing that we would take from our meetings with Joe would be this Sometimes you just wish you could go out there and punt when you're on defense. Well, they'd like to punt it on defense in that first half. It's been Jekyll and Hyde this year for the defense. They give up 62 points to Kansas State, 65 to Oklahoma. They're going to find a way to tighten it up here in the second half. Second and short again. Bouncing outside is Fozzie Whitaker. And he gets a first down across the 35. Number 20. I think when you look at Texas's offense this year, guys, particularly in the last five weeks, Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, has made some changes, personnel groupings that we'll get into in a second here. Whitaker in the game because Trey Newton is shaken up. McCoy taking a shot downfield, looking for Williams. They had single coverage again. At that time, it was Trent Hunter, the safety on the big fella, but overthrown. At the start of the year, Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator for Texas, had different guys playing different positions at wide receiver. It wasn't until he realized, look, Jordan Shipley is a slot receiver. James Kirkendall is a flanker, plays outside that. They played with a tight end on the field more recently. It's provided a lot more success. And they had to wait for players to get healthy. They had a lot of illnesses they dealt with. So this was a very patient, methodical coaching staff. Going on second and ten. It's a screen. Flip short. Whitaker. Dropped for a short game. Good play by Terrence Frederick and the Aggie defense in this crucial series to begin this second half has forced a third and long. And I get the feeling that in order for them to have a big play, they're going to have to risk and gamble and come up. Somebody's going to have to beat a man one-on-one -on -one and get McCoy in the backfield. The defense has to do a good job spying Colt McCoy here, though. He's burned them on a couple of big third downs early in the first half with his legs. Show pressure. McCoy fires short. And a good job fighting for the first down is Williams again. 
He's shown the deep speed. You see the strength after the catch just overmatching Justin McQueen. This is the offensive line. Simply put, why they're one of the top three teams in America. They pick up the blitz and they give McCoy time to throw the ball to the outside. McCoy knows where the pressure is coming from. He gets rid of it. And that's just mano a mano. Justin McQueen at corner. If he makes the tackle, they're punting. But because he doesn't, first down. Yeah, Williams has 32 pounds on him in that head-to-head -head matchup. McCoy taking a shot again downfield. Picked on McQueen again. That time he did a good job on Williams. Uh, you know what? I tell you what, Colt McCoy is very lucky to get up after this play here. Coming off that edge up top, Von Miller. He is so strong and so fast. You see him going down low there on Colt McCoy's legs. And missed a hold on Ulitoski who grabbed the jersey. No flying there. It seemed like Cole just felt him at the very last second and got his feet up off the it, ground. You just try to make your body go limp sometimes if you feel that pressure. And all that, it helps not getting hurt. Empty backfield on second and ten. No blitz. They drop into coverage. And not much after the catch for Williams that time. You just said it there, Chris. The cat and mouse game going on between these two coordinators. Joe Kimes showing a pressure look. So Paul McGoy says, okay, I'll go to the wide receiver screen. Then they back out, and it's a no gainer Once again, third and long. He's also been an efficient runner on third down. Time there is pressure. Good protection. Another completion and another lunge toward the marker by Williams. They'll spot him short, which Williams against McQueen every snap. This time the corner able to wrestle him down short of the first down. This is like playing bumper cars with your offensive line. Maroon jerseys can't get through to get to McCoy. Great job up front by your going and McCoy sneaking met right at the first down marker. He didn't get it. Matt Featherston, the big linebacker, combining with Frederick and the Aggies wow. apparently have made a stand. Wow. They did this earlier in the game, trying to go up tempo, try to catch AM sleeping to get the yard. They're gonna have to measure this. I don't think there's Doesn't one person close. There's not one person in this stadium who didn't realize coming out at halftime with Texas's offense and how hot they were, the importance of trying to break serve on this initial series by the University of Texas. I like it when you use the tennis analogies. I know that you're over there with that. <laughs> well, <laughs> you, you said it, Jesse. They they caught a and a little bit off guard in the first half with that. Not this time. I don't think he got it. No, yeah, they close. close. Horns, one of three now in fourth down. The fake punt earlier didn't work, and the Aggies' great field position. They'll get it at the 43, down seven. Defense does its job. College Station, we appreciate the presence of the Direct TV Drive the National Championship bus. Expert driver Charlie working on Thanksgiving, taking us down the highway to Houston after the game. Much appreciated. We can have our, our post game show from the bus, right? Yeah, a couple cold ones waiting. I'm Done told. it before. <laughs> <laughs> so the Aggies back on offense, down seven after the stop of play action fake. And then Johnson has a man caught. Fuller again. They just can't cover. Jeff Fuller had a pair of touchdowns in the first half, and that was Curtis Brown turned around. 15-yard game. Well, now that, that, that Texas defensive line better get back there because Gerard Robbins, uh, Johnson has shown that if you give Fuller time, he ran a double move on that deal there. That's how much time Johnson had. And to Michael who loses the ball in the pile. Longhorns say they have it. This would be a huge momentum changer for an offense that's been moving well, and it is Texas football. Sergio Kindle comes out of there for Muschamp with the football. That is now the 31st takeaway on the season for Texas. Third best in the country. A little bit of problem with the ball handling. Kristen Michael seemed to never really get the handle on the handoff. It, right. His eyes were looking to where he was going to go run rather than securing. Once that football touches your stomach as a runner, you got to take it, secure it, get it underneath the arm. He just was looking, trying to figure out where to run. So one turnover for each team. 
Aggies made Texas pay for the muffed punt in the first half. And Trey Newton is back in the ballgame, and he's got the rock. Newton cuts it back to the right. Stiff arm out near midfield. Aaron, an update on number 23. Chris, trainers were looking at Trey Newton trying to make him balance on a one leg, run around. I think he got whacked in the head pretty hard. Also, guys, keep your eye on Malcolm Williams. He came over to the sidelines grabbing his right hamstring, and uh, they, he was cramping up as well. And Aaron, he's been key tonight, and there's Newton. I, I love the official diagnosis. Whacked in the head pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of that tonight. I don't make you how. Especially, you know, with these types of games, guys flying around, you know there are major collisions happening out there. Newton, so talented. Balance, instincts, great hands. He's kind of emerged from this tailback comeback committee as the key guy. You, you, you like Shipley in single coverage, top of the screen? McLean, I'll tell you what. McCoy doesn't look that direction and slides at the 42 after about three yards. If this Texas offense loses Malcolm Williams, that's a big loss because tonight Texas A&M has had to live with players on an island out there against a, a bigger, more physical receiver when they decided to bring pressure, and they've been burned. Now, that time I circled Shipley, and, and he came open, but the pressure got to McCoy, flustered him, got him out of the pocket, so no way to throw the ball down the field. This is Newton with a crease, and Trey Newton may have had his bell rung, but he looks okay now inside the 25. That's what we were talking about earlier there, Craig. For the halftime adjustments, this defense really struggling to find the football in the zone read game. Watch this read here, Jesse. This is going to tell you why he gives the football, right? Guy stayed backside, give him the football. Take it out of McCoy's hands, and that's where the ball's supposed to go. But you see the nose guard, Patterson, just was, was messing around up front with the center, couldn't find the ball. McCoy with the design run. And they knock him down after a short game. Mangan, the linebacker. Texas is the number three team in the country. And, you know, you have to keep that in mind when you think about the big picture here. Rivalry game, but being on the road where they are, being good in execution is what they're supposed to do. She number two in both polls, but in the BCS, narrowly behind Alabama. Because of schedule strength and stuff. There's a handoff. Fozzie Whitaker. Here. White get around the corner, stretches near the marker at the 12. And Justin McQueen is going to need to sit in an ice bath after this game. Another tackle. If I'm Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator of Texas, I, every running play I would run would be the zone read right now. Until AM proves to me that they can stop it, I would not stop calling. Okay, so the, the, there's another part of that equation. Just showed you the draw that I had on the read on the defensive end. Now the folks on the inside of the Aggie defense, they've got to come up with a stop on the carrier. Third and one, they hand it to Newton. Another zone read, and he just plows for an easy first down. Newton getting near 100 yards. McCoy already has 127. We talked about how the Texas offensive line is more dominant, and you're seeing it on this drive with the surge they're getting off the football. <laughs> and there's just big white jerseys swallowing up Maroon. First down, Newton steps back into the hole. Drives down near the goal line. Touchdown. So the fumble does prove costly by Michael as Texas just muscles the ball down the field, 58 yards and eight plays, all of it on the ground, Craig. A different one here. This is just a zone stretch. You're stretching the defense, and the cutback is there. The offensive line powering and pushing, creating a wedge inside that Aggie defense. Lawrence makes it 35-21. The Aggies had, had gotten the stop to start the third quarter. We're on the move in Texas territory, but that mishandled handoff ball on the ground, and Texas doing what good teams do. They make you pay. They are so good with points off turnovers. It's been a strength all season long. Newton across the goal line. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy, and AT&T, sponsor of the All-America Player of the Week.
We're dude perfect. You're watching Thursday Night Football on ESPN. Have you seen these guys on YouTube? They're, they're like an internet sensation. They're all Texas A&M students. Those are not faked. The shots are real. It took 70 takes, I'm told, to get that one off the press box into the hoop. But you could throw that your whole life and never hit that shot. That's unbelievable. You get a website, easily Googleable. We're checking out. This is Swope. And the answer. Real urgency now for, for Johnson and this Aggie offense down by two touchdowns. Well, tomorrow afternoon, ABC serves up the undefeated fifth-ranked Cincinnati Bearcats hosting the Fighting Illini. That's noon Eastern time. Bearcats trying to go 11-0, staying in the hunt for the BCS championship game. They're one of the teams, along with TCU, a few others who could use a Texas loss here tonight. K Jewelers on ABC, noon Eastern time. Tony Pike going to get that start healthy enough now to go from the get-go. Couple players down on that kickoff return. It's like one for each team. Hard to spot the numbers. Check the replay here and, and keep your eye right on that 21 yard lock. Top of your screen here. Big mm. collision. Mm. Man. Mm. Boy. That looks like that collision we saw a couple of weeks ago. Zach Robinson, quarterback Oak State against Jamar Wall at, at Texas, at Tech, Texas yeah. Tech, man. Wow. Uh, you never like to see that. I mean, really, some of the most violent collisions in all of football happen on kickoff. I mean, the force and velocity these guys can generate from getting 40-yard runs at each other mm. is just unbelievable. You hate mm -hmm. to see that. Mm -hmm. Kyle Field has gone silent. Believe that it's Deion Beasley, a backup corner for Texas, number seven on the field. We'll check on the injuries when we come back. Anthony Lewis for AM is up. You can hear a pin drop inside Kyle Field. Deion Beasley, the senior for Texas out of Orange, Texas down covering the kickoff and you have to respect the courage of guys who go down there and, and get involved in violent collisions like the one you'll see at the top of the screen. Looked like Beasley had his eye on Swope, the returner, until the last minute. Unable to really brace for that block by Lewis. Aaron is down there on the field Chris, near no, the scene. Chris, no official word from Texas trainers yet, but guys are talking on the field that did walk over to him on the uh, board there and saying he is moving his fingers so um, that's good news that we're hearing right now but hope to get more from Texas trainers thanks Aaron Beasley took a big shot and you could see it immediately dropped to the turf went limp I think that's one of the scariest things about these types of collisions it's not just the initial collision that sometimes renders players unconscious it's that when they are unconscious falling to the ground they can't brace themselves for the fall and you see their helmets and their heads just fall right into the right into the ground you know technology and the improvement in the in the gear has come along but not at the same pace as the body and the speed of the mm. players and uh, the violent you know, these 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 collisions just are something Aaron Chris Mack Brown just turned around and told some of his teams guys were going to take him for x-rays but he is moving around he's doing good he's moving around so giving them that little confidence there Beasley one of those guys who's been in the program a senior doesn't get a lot of uh, time on defense not a real star by any means but a guy who will selflessly go down there and, and cover kickoffs and take those kind of collisions you know, and it's interesting you guys remember mike gundy the head coach from oklahoma state telling us last week that collisions in today's college football are far greater even than they were five years ago we hope that the initial unofficial prognosis proves to be true we'll take another break Did your player so Deion Beasley, the Texas senior, helped to the cart. And keep you posted. Again, Mac Brown informing his team that Beasley was able to move his fingers and hands. They'll take him for an x-ray. Beasley is a guy who started nine games last year. As you see, his, his dad returned to the stands. They hustled him down there to check on his son, as you understand. 
He's the guy that had a big there sack against go. the Aggies last year. And you see the mutual respect in the class of this crowd here at Texas A&M. It's a very classy move by Mike Sherman in that break. He huddled his team together onto the field, and they all took a knee. Yeah, and Mike a moment was, of silence. Yeah. That's very classy by head coach Mike Sherman of Texas A&M. And now after this, this break, a crucial possession for Sherman's team. Down by two touchdowns, midway third quarter, having a whole lot of trouble stopping Texas. You got to get something here, you feel. Yeah, really hard for both teams to come back after you had a layoff like that because your mind stops. Now you got to start the motor again. Well, it's Cyrus Gray in the game. Michael, who fumbled in the last possession, not in there. And it's Gray turning the corner and scampering for a hard earned nine yards I'll be interested to see if this Texas A&M starts attacking the middle of the field again in the passing game that was the area of the field in that first half they found a lot of success throwing the football in those soft zones over the middle of the field so Longhorns defense that after the Texas Tech game even up just 205 a game a collision in the backfield and Gray is dropped for a loss Chucky Brown got him but the quarterback and tailback bumping into each other and you know what now you've had two series in a row where you've had bad exchanges the rhythm's not there they're going to work on a reverse fake and reverse and just not they're not in sync that looked like that was on Cyrus Gray you saw him hesitate there for a second it looked like he wasn't sure which way to go right or left and when he went left it was way too late second and one becomes now third and four crucial play Johnson fires complete and the first down catch by Jamie McCoy, the tight end. Very impressive job by Gerard Johnson, staying with it. You know, they've had a couple of, they've shot themselves in the foot now the last two drives, but staying with it, understanding where to go with the ball. I didn't see any semblance of confusion usually in the Texas secondary in film study. You know, and they're just not matching up underneath. Gray dropped for a loss. Flying in there. Stop behind the line was Lamar Houston. And and I was wrong in film study. I thought that Cyrus Gray and, and, and Kristen Michael would have a good game because they'd run past arm tackles. You can't dance around like that against this defensive line. It's guys like Lamar Houston, Will Muschamp told us he's making himself a lot of money here recently. Six sacks now in the last three games from that defensive tackle spot. Yeah, he's now got 20 tackles for loss on the season. Second and 14. Horns rush for Johnson. Flushed anyway. Takes off. Gets a block or two. And Gerard Johnson inside the 20. Well, you like what you see for 2010 with this guy running the Aggie offense. You know what? Gerard Johnson had the instincts. He felt it, jumped up inside, and then took off. And then a nice job of Cyrus Gray downfield as well as the receiver Fuller blocking. Michael is back in the game in the I formation. The tailback gets it on first down and takes a big shot. Muckleroy stopped him. A 43-yard run for Johnson. Gerard Johnson has been the difference in this football game. As well as Colt McCoy's play, Gerard Johnson has matched him play for play, whether it's with his arm or with his legs. But you said that in the pregame. Yeah. And in our open, you said he, that Gerard Johnson has to play well. 15 to 17, what an outstanding day. How's that efficiency against one of the best defenses in the country, a pass efficiency defense? A flag down. Johnson is shot of the end zone. Jumbo Fuller's there. And well defended. It's intercepted in the end zone. Curtis Brown came down with the football against Fuller. We'll check the flag. Offside. Mm. Defense number 33. Five-yard penalty. So Houston jumped offside to nullify the interception. Smart play by Gerard Johnson because he saw Houston jump offside. He knew he had a free play. Hey, why not throw it up to Jeff Fuller, who's made a ton of big plays in this game here tonight? And with Fuller's 6-4 body frame, you like his chances. That was just a great athletic play in the end zone by the defense. But, you know, Gerard Johnson and this offense going down the field, answering the call, doing exactly what they had to do. Second and five after the penalty. Johnson flushed. He'll just throw it away. 
Once again, so tough to block that Texas front four. Sam Acho is in there, bothering the quarterback. There's smart football right there from Gerard Johnson. Now you're in the red zone. You're knocking on the door for some points. Don't try to force anything, do anything stupid with the football. But wouldn't you say this and agree with me on this one here? You have to go for six here because you're not, you've are not. you been given up six, and there's really no reason to believe that you're going to be able to stop Texas. No so question. six is important. Blitz on third and five, a throw toward the end zone, and that one is intercepted with no flag. Earl Thomas one more time, the eighth pick of the year for the Thorpe Award finalists. They tested him one too many times there, didn't they? Earl Thomas read the route. He saw the wheel. He was not going to bite, did not get inside, stayed his course. Watch the wheel out here. Comes to the outside five and up the field. You know how we talked about Colt McCoy throwing back shoulder throws for touchdowns in the first half? That's a case Gerard Johnson could have used the back shoulder throw. It's more of a line drive throw right at the back shoulder of his receiver so Earl Thomas could not make that play. That, that was the right decision by Gerard Johnson, but it was not the right type of throw. What a sophomore season for Thomas. And turnovers now on back-to-back -back possessions for AM's offense after not having any in the first half. McCoy will just throw it away. Jonathan Stewart, the freshman linebacker, was in hot pursuit. First interception for Johnson in a home game this season. Yeah, you know, he has not made a lot of mistakes, but in this particular football game, coming in against a football team that takes the ball away and all these interceptions that they've produced this season, 20 coming in, number two in the nation, you know, not surprised totally that Texas has a pick. Newton's got it. Not much there. chances now Texas A&M has had on the last two possessions offensively they had a fumble and they throw an interception in the red zone the defense hasn't been able to do much all night but a big stop here to get the football back around midfield would be enormous for the home team and Malcolm Williams that Aaron reported member had the leg problem not in there on this third and eight he's been the go-to guy tonight for McCoy protection breaking down And Vaughn Miller, the nation's sack leader, with his second tonight, with a little help, too, from Tony Gerard Eddy. A different kind of move than we've seen in study. Vaughn Miller really coming hard to the outside. He's at the top of your screen, left of your screen. It stops, comes back underneath. A different move you Lutovsky hadn't seen. But that's Joe Kahn's what he said. That's his favorite pass rush, rush move. He likes to use the speed, set you up with that outside, put his foot in the ground, yep. come back inside. Pressure punt now for Justin Tucker. They use the rugby style punt, and Tucker's in there. Fielded by Swope. Makes a man miss. And Ryan Swope, had a productive night returning, gets it to midfield. Another reminder that ESPN2 will have hit West Virginia. At 7 o'clock Eastern time to kick off the doubleheader. Crucial game in the Big East. Panthers trying to avoid backyard brawl upset trap. And then Nevada and Boise State at 10 o'clock Eastern time on the Blue Rug. Used to think it was just all about Colin Kaepernick, the reigning whack offensive player of the year. But how about this production on the ground? The first time ever. Three players have rushed for over 1,000 yards in the same season. Talking up the Wolfpack. You, you think they got a shot against the Broncos? I really do. It's tough to win on the blue <laughs> turf, but I do. Quarterback drawn. Johnson. Dragged down inside the 15. Kevin Matthews, the center, the son of Bruce Matthews, an all-pro player. Watch 63, the middle of your screen, come off to the linebacker level and hit the linebacker. Is that outstanding? His dad, Bruce, said, hey, give Kevin some love tonight. There you go. <laughs> Excellent job on the big linebacker, Muckleroy. Two big runs now here in the second half for Johnson. They hand it off to Michael. And he's knocked down by Robinson in Houston. Points are at a premium right now, big time. Now, you, you've coughed it up last possession down in this area with the interception. Your defense just got a huge stop, three and out. 
You gotta come away with points here. Be smart if you're Gerard Johnson. Yeah, both quarterbacks perhaps 100-yard rushing nights and big passing nights. This is Michael. Muscles were about four. It'll be third and four. It sure gets tough going against this defense when they don't have a lot of field to cover. You know what? When you look at them, mm. certainly offensive coordinator for Texas A&M, Nolan Cromwell said it, no weaknesses at any position defensively, and boy, they can run. They are fast. When you see a crease as a running back, you have to hit it. A one-yard gain at times is a win against this defense. Cyrus Gray, the tailback's in the slot to the right of Johnson. Quarterback takes off around the end. Not going to get away. Roderick McElroy dropped him for a loss. Fourth down. It, it, one of the real difficult things and one of the advantages of Will Muschamp is the fact that you've got outside Sergio Kendall now playing linebacker. He's standing up, which he'd done in the past instead of being down. So that personnel matchup is always a challenge when you're going against Texas. Well, how about that speed from Roderick Rockmore, uh, McElroy, Craig, middle linebacker. I mean, that's a designed run for Gerard Johnson to get the edge and turn the corner. He did not have a chance. 13th tackle for McElroy. Five on the play clock as Randy Bullock is in to attempt a, a 31-yard field goal. But that is a bitter three points really for the Aggies. They cut it to 11, Craig, with a minute 24 in the third, but now need a few more defensive stops. Well, at least the defense is showing they can do that, right? You know, a couple of times they've done it now, so a lot of hope there. Enough to continue to give these AM students reason to believe and keep kissing. A little peck for a field goal, not the lingering kiss six, for a touchdown. But, but six will get you one, <laughs> so will three. <laughs> All right. College Football Awards Spotlight brought to you by the Home Depot. We've got awards candidates in action tonight. I mentioned that Jordan Shipley is a finalist for the Bolitnikoff Award. Competition. Golden Tate also in for that for Notre Dame. Earl Thomas, a finalist for the Thorpe Award as well. McCoy, a finalist for a whole bunch of awards. Surprise, surprise. Walter Camp Player of the Year, Davey O'Brien Award. McCoy will be honored in New York City. National Football Foundation Banquet as a National Scholar Athlete of the Year. And he's also in the running for the Campbell Award, which used to be the Dratty Trophy, considered the academic Heisman. Tim Tebow very much in that race as well. So this is Goodwin. Always tries to get to the outside to show that speed. Sometimes you just got to get what you can. A flag is down as Goodwin is knocked down at the 18-yard line, and McCoy goes back to work. Illegal block is back during your return, number 25. After the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul, first down. Mac Brown won't be happy with those special teams penalties, which are beginning to pile up. McCoy has run for a career-high 121 yards, thrown for 242, and three touchdowns. This is what he does. It is all-around ability to both throw the football, run the football. He's a winner. He's a competitor, and he showed it yet again tonight. But his asset to this team right now is his composure as a senior leader backed up in the end zone with this hostile crowd. rolling fires near side out of the hands of Williams who's had a big night drop that one Terrence Frederick was covering I think the offense just has a different look when Malcolm Williams is on the field and Jordan Shipley is back in the slot on the last drive Jordan Shipley had to go out play the split end and they went three and out and the Aggies have a different look when they play together on defense playing a good sound defense that time now it's Williams out wide. Apparently the leg good enough to return. Some confusion for the horns lining up. They're finally set. And he's rushed four. McCoy has got time. Now scrambles in the end zone. Just escapes the safety and fires downfield and over the head of Williams. 
Boy, McCoy really trusts his quickness because that was very nearly a sack in the end zone. But again, Jordan Shipley that time lined up at the split end spot by himself on the left. That's exactly where Colt McCoy looked off the get-go, wasn't open, and he had to scramble. How about Matt Moss, 55, the most improved player perhaps on this Aggie defense, staying at home and forcing McCoy to make a throw on the run. McCoy would like that throwback. I think he thought he had a man deep for a big play. Here comes the noise on third and ten. Empty backfield. Aggies don't blitz. And McCoy takes a shot over the head of Buckner. So three passes, three incompletions from in deep. And here comes a punt. Craig, how about this AM defense all of a sudden? Two consecutive possessions, three and out. Joe Kynes. You know, he says, you know what, fellas, he's got a lot of one-liners. He's really funny. I wish we could tape it and give it to you. But he just talks about, look, don't be cute. You are what you are. You can't go gimmicky. You know, you get out there and you get them all running in the same area at the same area at the same time. You got a chance. <laughs> he, should be on, he should be on a TV show. He is funny. So Justin Tucker, again, will see the rugby punt. Swope standing in midfield. at four. I'm not going to get this one off. Well, there's no whistle. The play clock had run down. But the official play clock now still shows 14 seconds. So our on screen was incorrect and Tucker punts it out near midfield. The ball is fumbled by Swope but recovered. Greg, you want to hear more from Joe Kines? Thank you very much. Here's the press conference this week. But to have a, a senior quarterback who's hot and, and uh, probably the best wide receiver in college football, uh, that, that, you know, it's, uh, it's like my wife entered Miss America contest. You know, I love her to death, but she might not have a chance. <laughs> but she's 65 years old. If she ordered the day, uh, Miss, Miss Grandmother, she'd be all right. But Miss America, she ain't going to make it. <laughs> Takes a secure man to, to goof on his wife at a press conference. It's not the first time. He said that they've been married so long that she understands. He's got a bunch of great liners. What do you tell us? There are two things an, an offense cannot prepare for: the overlap and second effort. Great coach good effort speed. lately. Last couple. Oh yeah, absolutely. Serious, but now it's Johnson on the offense down by 11. Seconds ticking down to the third quarter as they work on the safety of Jordan Pugh. Johnson fires far side, a low throw. Going down to get it is Wachiku. And they rule it a catch and a first down at the 40 as the clock expires, ending the third quarter. So. The Aggies threatening down 11, and the Longhorns getting a four-quarter fist fight from their arch rivals here at Kyle Field tonight. Singing and swing here at Kyle Field. Hullabaloo, Canuck, Canuck. It only makes sense to an Aggie, Craig. And, and I know this song with Kalen going here. I have done that many times. And being an SMU Mustang, I had to learn the words, but I figured it out, and it's a great spirit and a lot of fun. One of the many great traditions here at a and this conference and college football in general are better when AM is good. So that this kind of setting and showcase a lot more often. Johnson fires far side. We're going to have to get the ball as Fuller, who can't quite get away. Much better defensive quarter for both sides. I'm watching Gerard Johnson right now. Mechanically, his footwork has been very good here for a good stretch of this game. His feet and his body are all working together. He's been very, very accurate here tonight. Only four incompletions in his 21 attempts. And off. Well, it is tough to run wide in this Texas defense. Michael cut down by Curtis Brown on the corner. 
but he did the right thing there, Chris. You saw where he didn't cut back. Yep. Felt like he had pressure on the inside. You got to trust your speed, and there's a lot of room out there to get around the corner. He's got a lot of that speed, Craig. You know, against Baylor last week, he had a 97-yard touchdown run. I mean, he's a home run hitter for a true freshman running back. They got a lot of good years coming ahead from this guy. He did get the first down. Gets it again on the zone read. Dancing to the hole <laughs> and down to the 15. Another first down. Yeah, that 97 yard play, the longest play from scrimmage in AM history, so he's got power and speed. And, and look at the Texas defense standing there trying to watch, and they're not moving and beating the guy in front of them. That's that zone read as well, Chris. And well, Kurt, bringing the wood. Curtis Brown, the cornerback, <laughs> was stuck <laughs> flat footed, and he felt the power there from the true freshman, Kristen Michael. And off again, Michael banging off yeah. the horns, heading into the end zone. There is a true freshman stepping up in his first AM Texas game, banging right past Sergio Kindle and Curtis Brown. And the Aggies cut it to five, will go for two here. This to make it a three point game, opening minute and a half of the fourth quarter. Impressive series of runs there from the true freshman. Really, that was. Great speed, and you see why offensive coordinator Nolan Cromwell says he's the most powerful back in the stable. Texas confused. They'll have to spend a timeout. Only 10 Longhorns on the field. A crucial play as the Aggies try to cut into this lead. And, and I think it helped Texas a and because the Aggies had an offensive lineman trying to get into the huddle late, so that really helped the Aggies. Most champ unhappy was Eddie Jones, the defensive end, running out there late. Another look at the 16-yard touchdown run. And remind you, this is a defense giving up 50 yards a game coming in. <laughs> you know, they're number one in the country, and, and they're just bringing the wood. That's Sergio, that's Kendall. Sergio Kendall he just ran over. I mean, that's a, this is a first-round pick. He just got the shoulder. That's two consecutive plays where Kristen Michael ran, up, ran somebody over. And Jimmy McCoy had a nice block on Kendall to help knock him down. And that was an impressive 49-yard drive in five plays. And Michael did most of the work all of a sudden you know you look at the stat sheet this is a Texas defense that was giving up only 50 yards a game on the ground number one in the country a buck 56 so far for Texas A&M and we're at the start of the fourth quarter what do you do here in the two-point play guys? finding Fuller Jeff Fuller with the size in the hands he's lined up in the slot to the left how about a quarterback draw there's no spy in the middle of the Texas defense and Johnson's gonna throw to the end zone lobs it Cut. Tannehill. And the Aggies have survived a couple of turnovers in the second half to fight back within three. Ryan Tannehill is one of the better athletes, maybe the best. Look, he's on the inside slot, comes to the outside. You can't cover Tannehill with someone like that. At just great execution again by the Aggies. Kristen Michael finds the end zone against the Horns defense that had allowed only four rushing touchdowns all season. So 11 unanswered points by the Aggies have tightened this thing up and pressure back on McCoy and the Horns offense. But I love that response from Colt McCoy. As soon as Kristen Michael scored, McCoy kind of had that nod. All right, I got something for that. Well, let me tell you where the nod needs to go. The first half, 10 rushes, 119 yards for Colt. Second half, four for two yards. Big difference. So that defense has done a better job finding when he has the football and pursuing. Well, the Horns had almost 400 yards in the first half. Only 84 in the third quarter. This is Goodwin again. And good coverage by the Aggies. McCoy will start at the 22 as we check back with Reese. Thanks. Masoli's heroic setting up a monster civil war a week from tonight. 
Incomplete on first down. Aaron? Chris, I want to give you an update right now on senior safety Jordan Pugh. He has suffered an AC sprain to his left shoulder, but there is no way he is missing the rest of this game. He is the guy, Chris, where you said, ah, Jordan, I got to tell you, the stats don't look good. And he said, you know what, Fowler? That's why we play it on the grass. He is pumped up right now. He's also a tough guy, Aaron. You've got there with an AC sprain trying to play safety. There's big collisions. Not easy. McCoy has missed his last five, takes off running again, slips and tackles, and breaks free. Colt McCoy in a foot race. Runs out of the 25. And a flag comes in very late behind the play. It's a 54-yard gain. Now we'll check the marker. Oh, that's a block in the back. Malcolm Williams. Little block in the back. Offense number nine. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the five. It'll be first down his head. So it's still a big gain, but Williams, did he need to block in the back? No, not at all. This is behind the play. Leave it alone. And the nudge yeah. there is going to get you. You know, it's uh, you just got to know where you are. I cannot remember the last <laughs> time I watched a game with so many long runs by quarterbacks. How many have we seen now between Cole McCoy and Gerard Johnson? We got news from Malcolm. Justin McQueen was not going to catch the quarterback. Did not need to shove him to the ground. Texas still though with a first down in positive territory at the 45. And what a death from McCoy. Buck 64 rushing now. Hit in the backfield is Newton that bounces. And the Aggies will swarm him. Jordan Pugh playing with that injured shoulder and getting up slowly was there. Well, you're seeing the Aggie defense really play well together. The defensive line shifted left. The linebackers came right. They're starting to challenge and beat the block to that UT offensive line. They look inspired. That's all you can say right now. The last three possessions, this defense has looked more inspired. And again, I'll point back to the fact of these in-state rivalry games. It's just, it's not palpable. It's just, you just see it. Blitz. McCoy. Hit as he throws, and it comes out wobbly as Von Miller leveled him. Uh, Colt McCoy, he knows that when he plays against Texas A&M, he's going to get hit. Ulatoski on the outside there can't deal with Von Miller, the speed. He's figured out how to get around Big 74. Texas thought that they were okay with Adam Ulatoski, a two-time All-Big 12 lineman, blocking Von Miller by himself. You see there, he barely got out of his stance. Had a chance to square himself up. That's how fast Vaughn Miller gets around the edge. Third and 12. And he's showing pressure up the middle again. McCoy gets it out. Complete. And breaking a tackle is Kirkendall. James Kirkendall to the end zone. You gamble. Sometimes you hit the quarterback. Sometimes he gets it out and it makes you pay. Football is a game of inches. You almost have a sack in the backfield. Kirkendall came into the game with 44 catches, nearly 400 yards. You got to wrap up. You got to make the play in open space. Craig, you know what? Steven Terrell, he's a true freshman cornerback back there. The pressure doesn't get to McCoy. If you're going to let him catch it, that's fine because he caught the football short of the first down marker. You got to make that tackle. That's the difference between a fourth down and a touchdown. Fourth touchdown pass from McCoy covers 47 yards. And that is a punch to the gut for the Aggie defense. It was back within three points now. A 10 point game. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Applebee's. It's a whole new neighborhood. And in part by Chevy and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. So Texas, under pressure, answers a good-looking drive. Colt McCoy, the big run. And then the touchdown pass to Kirkendall. Back to a 10-point lead, 12.04 to play. Slips at the 22. ABC, primetime. 
Most will see Notre Dame and Stanford from Palo Alto as the Cardinal try to get back on track after losing to Cal in the rivalry game. And a good rivalry, Georgia and Georgia Tech. Interesting to see how much heart the Bulldogs show on the road there after losing between the hedges to Tech last year. I'm really curious to watch Notre Dame's run defense against Toby Gerhardt. Toby Gerhardt over 1,500 yards now, and that Notre Dame run defense gave up 231 in a loss this past weekend to UConn. Johnson, to work down 10, little chip. Boy, <laughs> there's some laundry on the field in that Longhorn defense, Sergio Kindle. First time we've seen Texas with really dropping out and only coming with three, changing the look, trying to confuse Gerard Johnson, but a little, what we say in, right in the neighborhood, man, you, you better go pick your jock up. <laughs> That's a very good athlete, but he just made look silly there, Kendall. Johnson now has run for 85 yards. A flag is down as Kristen break, Michael breaks free. Down to the 35, but a flag came out at the snap. I believe this will come back. Illegal motion, offense number 33, leaning forward at the snap. Five yard penalty, still first. So Michael nullifies his own 32 yard run. Don't often see a false start from the back. Oh, just leaning shift. forward, rocking a little bit, moving forward before the snap, which of course is illegal. I'm checking his leg just a yeah, little bit. Come yeah. on. You got to just stay, you got to stay. You got to stay put. Mm, the tailback know. up here is booing that call. <laughs> <Jesse. laughs> Boy, I tell you, that's... It looks like he got a bit of a cramp on that run as well. He started grabbing his, his toe, trying to stretch it out there on that run. Are you kidding me? A lean like that, a lean. He was, he was there, and, and he had not... Hey, you get a guy's out there a long way. That was... I don't know no about that No false step? One. No. No. But, it's a neat thing about college football that near the end of the season all these games are sort of interconnected in the BCS area You got Gary Patterson over there in Fort Worth watching this game hoping yeah. that Texas will stumble tonight yeah. Or next week against Nebraska to elevate the Horned Frogs in a national title contention Cincinnati perhaps in the same boat and BCS standings, you know, Texas Not really a, a commanding lead over TCU, but no way they'll fall behind them unless they lose and everybody kind of just assuming that the Florida Bama winner will meet the Longhorns January 7th in Pasadena. Assumptions are dangerous. And what, what do you make of, of Texas's assignment next week if the Longhorns get out of here with a win against Nebraska? Yeah, you know, what you're seeing here tonight is an, a defense that's being exposed a little bit. So I, I think Texas's defense is going to have to step up, and I would expect that they step up next week. What about Nebraska's defense? Oh, that's easily the second best defense in the conference behind Texas. You got to remember, <laughs> earlier in the year they beat Oklahoma 10 to three. It's the first time Oklahoma's offense has been held without an offensive touchdown in 10 years. Oh, Polini, that Nebraska defense—they are serious. So Johnson now first and 15. Hit as he throws and it's incomplete. That time it was Kindle with his 29th quarterback pressure of the year. Had a sack earlier tonight, but the sacks don't really tell the whole story of, of his senior year. No, he's been extremely active. And I think he's created a lot of attention from opposing offenses. All year long, he's been chipped by running backs. There's been tight end help. He gets double teamed a lot, but because of it, it's freed up other guys like Lamar Houston to make big plays. Gray in the slot on second and 15, but Johnson takes off. Tries to bounce through traffic, could not get away from big Keiston Randall. Number one. I think the real development of this Texas football team defensively this year was going in defensive tackle Roy Miller last year. They yep. lost him, right? He was a great player. So all of a sudden, Sergio Kendall, he's up to 246 pounds, giving them the flexibility, and then getting Randall and Houston on the inside, and them coming along, this defense matured. Longhorn's not showing pressure on third and 15, but you never know with Muschamp. Nope, they drop into coverage. Kindle off the edge, pressuring the quarterback, but a strike into double coverage. Terrence McCoy, first down to the 45. 
What a throw. That is not at all where I thought Gerard Johnson was going to go with the football. He decides to go back to the flanker spot in double coverage, and he just gives it a great view. You're going to see exactly what Gerard Johnson sees. Soft spot, anticipates the throw. Give McCoy credit. High points it. Nice catch. Crucial pickup. Three-man rush. Johnson times. Slings it across the middle. And it's Tannehill taking a shot at the 50 after a five-yard game from Kendall. Throughout this ball game, Gerard Johnson's had a nice job throwing the ball. But his receivers, we've seen two or three times compete with double coverage for the ball in the air. Christian, he used to work in that cramp on the sidelines as Johnson scampers away. Fires sideline. Leaping catch made at the 40. Good job by Morrow. Howard Murrow, another example of a receiver stepping up, making a play for you. Blitz coming off the right side and just avoided it. That's Curtis Brown. It was the, the short field corner coming out untouched. And Gerard Johnson <laughs> just steps up, delivers a BB. Howard Murrow tight roping the sideline. Gerard Johnson, well, what can you say about the way he's played to him? Here's a handoff to Gray. Have to carry the low with Michael on the sidelines, Ancho on the stop. And this is, this is back in, by the way. different territory for Will Muschamp of Texas. He's not used to other offenses racking up 450 total yards on them midway through the fourth quarter. takes a big shot from Gideon. Blake Gideon right there telling you and showing you the coaching that takes place here. Will Muschamp, he knows. He teaches his guys. They understand the game, where the ball is going, and the attack of that wide receiver. You know what's impressive to me about this secondary for Texas? Three of the four starters are sophomores, underclassmen, very young, but very disciplined. So season high in points, yards, and rushing yards for a Texas opponent tonight. Third and six. And some fires far side. Tannehill circles back. And Jukes down inside the 10. And a flag comes in late on the tackle. It's Swope. Check it. Not Tannehill. First and goal. He beat Earl Thomas. And now we'll check the flag. Personal foul. Face mask. Offense, number 25, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. It'll be first down. So the catch counts, but then Swope got his hand up in the face mask of the defender. Swope is a converted running back who has a tough body about him. That's why you saw the ability in the open space, but clearly his hand gets in the face mask of the defender, and that's a, hey, I just got to get it down. That's that running back mentality, trying to look for the straight arms, getting it yep. too high. You look like that today in our, in our Tricky Day Thanksgiving game. Yeah, Phil Dean, our producer, caught a ball. I tried to disengage him with the football. He thought he was part of the football. <laughs> It was touched, you understand that? Okay. I did touch him. Yeah, you can touch him definitely. So first down, Johnson fires short again, going to one knee as McCoy. That's a costly 15-yard penalty. They were down first and goal. Now have to work their way in, and the clock ticking now down near seven and a half minutes. You know, having said that, how good has AM been on third down tonight, converting more than 50% of their plays against the best third down defense in the entire country? They've won that battle and in a very good third down offense throughout the season. He didn't expect that tonight. Johnson fires for the end zone. Loops it to Fuller. Touchdown. And the hat trick for the sophomore from McKinney, Texas. He beat Aaron Williams and the Aggies. With a point after, can cut it to three once again. Aggies fans are sucking face tonight. <laughs> Courtesy of Jeff Fuller and Gerard Johnson. <laughs> Johnson just continues to answer McCoy. It is last seven on that drive. You know what? Seven ten to play, and in this quarterback duel, now it's McCoy's turn. Up three. In 
route to 11 and 0. Mac Brown's team's really only been tested once this season. The Red River rivalry in Dallas until tonight, that is. You're going to see Jeff Fuller in the slot. He's just going to run a fade route from the inside, and it's far enough outside where the safety, Earl Thomas, cannot get to the throw. Gerard Johnson does a nice job anticipating it, puts it up high, and again, the strength of the hands and the size. Six foot four, Jeff Fuller just winning the ball. Against a corner, Aaron Williams, that many believe has an NFL future, but after he's done here, just a sophomore. This is Goodwin. And the freshman has a crease. Sprinter speed. Forget about it. He is so dangerous. World class as a sprinter and a long jumper. They put him back in the middle of this game to try to make a play. And Texas answers without McCoy having to even take the field. Now 11 non-offensive touchdowns yep. by Texas this year. They're number one in the country. Yeah. You know, you talk about uh, you got to have special players and plays to compete for the national championship. There's an example of it. Maggie's allowed a 97-yard kickoff return by Brandon Banks of Kansas State. And that blowout loss, and now have allowed a second. This a crushing blow inside of seven minutes to go. This guy is a big-time track athlete and a very good football player. World junior champion in the long jump in the 4 by 100 and He shows you that speed right here. Yeah, he went 95 yards in 13 seconds. Back to a 10-point game. And welcome back. Mercedes-Benz intelligent move is this guy Marquise Goodwin you know DJ Monroe the season-long kickoff returner he's out injured so let's just bring in the true freshman with world-class speed and that is a huge mismatch against the kicker there fifth time Texas has immediately responded to an 8 touchdown so offense special teams both getting in on the act they, but they've been doing that all year I mean this is a resilient football team now, when Vince Young and the great Longhorn team came in here in 2005, trying to stay on track for a national championship, needed a block punt to get out of here with a win. Tonight, it's the kickoff return. Swope trying to answer. And as a lane, Ryan Swope around the corner. And out near midfield. And he's hit late, and that's 15 more. So a brain cramp by the kickoff coverage team, and the Aggies will have great field position. That guy is good. Ryan Swope can return kicks. He's a running back. He's a converted running back, and you've seen him have an impact on this game. After the play, personal foul, late hit, kicking team number 16. That 15-yard penalty will be added to the results of the play. First down. And, and I would argue, as resilient as Texas has been all night, Texas A&M counter-punching just as well. Absolutely. You know, and, I, and, and Swope, he's got speed. He's a competitive speed guy. Deceptive. Yeah. And, and he runs almost like he's angry. Yeah. You know, when he has it, he's not That's scared. A good call. Yeah, you're right. He hits that. Yeah. He's like Desmond Howard returning kicks. Ah, just fearless. Kinda, he just I, hits I, I, it. I thought Desmond flailed down the field. Desmond would say he's a little bit quicker. A little bit quicker yeah. than Swope when he gets the open field. That was a 39 yard return plus the 15 yard penalty, but the Aggies have moved back five here. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 76, five yard penalty, still first. Down. Yeah, the bad news for the Aggies is that Goodwin's return put Texas back up by 10, but, but the good news is it only took 13 seconds. So if you're going to go down by 10, give the offense a chance to work here. And it's the highest scoring NM Texas game in history 116 years of history. Johnson. Fires sidelines incomplete off the hands of Wachiku. He you know was what? pressured by Houston there. If, if I had, I know what the answer is. I'm going to say, if I had said to you guys, Texas scores 49 points in this ball game, but uh, do you think the Aggies are in it even close? No, no way. No. That's the progress this team's made though from last year. We did the AM game Thanksgiving Day, 49 to nine, blown out. They got some more progress to, to go on defense, I think. They come great. Handoff inside to Michael. He's a big part of their future, though. This true freshman. Good looking tailback. For the first time in a long time, it looks right now like Will Muschamp's just playing off a little bit defensively. You know, he's 
known for having that aggressive attitude, send guys after the quarterback. But right now, very content to sit back. I think, I think afraid right now of how Gerard Johnson's playing. Five receivers for Johnson. Michael was in the slot to the right. Third and nine. Nagy's have three. Prudent to use one right there if there's any confusion. You got two plays to get these nine yards, but they'll talk about it. Now more than a thousand total yards in this game, 1,073. What do you think? Offensive shootout, Illinois, the Bearcats, high noon Eastern time tomorrow at Nippert. I, I, I have believed this for a while. This is a dangerous game for Cincinnati. Illinois has a talented football team. I've seen them twice this year. They have the ability to go in there and win this game. Yeah, they also have, have had their defensive problems. Total defense. I'll tell you what, the way that Brian Kelly substituted Tony Pike and Zach Kolaris <laughs> a few weeks back was unbelievable. Bringing Tony Pike in off the bench, first action in weeks in the red zone. On a crossing route. Touchdown. <laughs> and, and throws two touchdowns in the game. I mean, what a deal. And, and one that should have been another one completed. Yeah. I mean, he, you know, he, he has done a marvelous job of coaching and preparing his team for a shot at it. I hear you, Craig, too. I mean, I mean, the Bearcats will overwhelm you with, with talent. You can't just roll it out there and, and, and chuck up an automatic W. And with all the focus being on the big showdown with Pittsburgh at the end of the season, it, it is a, a careful game for them. Third and nine now. No pressure. Johnson has time. Fires into traffic. And Wachaku, showing the strength of hands, comes down with it. He battled Curtis Brown. First down. And yet another third and long conversion against the best third down defense in all of college football. And only three rush, eight drop. And again, it's up to the receivers to battle the secondary. Wachaku does his job a true freshman. Single coverage, top of the screen on Fuller, who already has three touchdown catches. But it's Johnson taking off. Good read and an eight-yard gain. 18 true freshmen have played this year for Texas A&M. 11 have started. That's the most in the Football Bowl subdivision. We've mentioned a couple names tonight. Wachaku, Ryan Swope, Kristen Michael. All true freshmen have all played big roles tonight. Here's the reverse. Wachaku. And hammered. No gain as flying up was Curtis Brown and Aaron Williams. Uh, and to follow up on what you were saying there, Jesse, statistically, I want to blow you up here on this thing, but 80, roughly 80% of all the production of rushing, scoring, tackling, everything with Texas A&M are by freshmen or sophomores. 88%. Yeah. And, and it's a big number, man. There's just a lot of young talent on this team. Need three on third down. Johnson. Campers for it. First down at the 12. Draw Johnson this year has been able to make big plays with his legs. More than half the times he tucks the football and runs, it's for a first down or a touchdown. And, and on third down specifically, 23 of 29 times that he runs on third down results in a first down. And they call those money plays here. Boy, are we dialed in on numbers or now what? We are, we are like just like... There's some big numbers of total offense for Johnson. 432. He takes a shot to the end zone and overthrows Tannehill. But really, I, I mean, when was the last time you saw Texas's defense have the football marched on them running and throwing like you've seen it here tonight? Well, not this season. Oklahoma threw the ball well with Landry Jones after Bradford was knocked out, but at negative 16 rushing yards. I got the answer there. I would say back all the way last year, Texas Tech. In Lubbock, yeah, long time ago. And a misfire on second down. Appeared to be some confusion. The offensive line was down in their stance. And this will be a third and long now. Keep watching that clock. Keep in mind now the game clock going under four minutes. They'll get points and make this thing a one possession game, but is that enough time? to get the ball back from this Texas offense. They pick up the corner blitz, and Johnson rolls right. Fires short. And a catch short of the first down marker. That's Wachiku, but it'll be fourth down. 
Earl Thomas patrolling the area tackled the freshman. Yeah, you know, a tough decision here. You, if you feel like your defense can stop them, then you kick the points. If you don't, then you go for the for the six. You kick it for sure because you need to make this a one possession game. If you go for it and you don't get it, then you don't have a chance at all. Amari Houston down on the field. It's a chance for guys on both sides to catch their breath. Another impressive drive by Johnson. Randy Bullock, reliable kicker. It'll be up if he makes it to that AM defense to stop McCoy. It's amazing, you know, on paper, we, we had talked about this all week, right? On paper, this was a no-brainer. There was no way this Texas A&M offense had a chance tonight for any productivity. Craig is saying he did. <laughs> I'm looking at him. <laughs> I took the baton this week, and I ran with it saying, fellas, I'm telling you, this is one of those games, and, uh, you know, Every, every once in a while, you know, I told you so kind of thing. But uh, I, you, you see why. This crowd, and I, he started early with a big bomb touchdown. Fowler, you were pouring water on the fire early in the week. No, I, I am shocked. Yeah. You're right. I am yeah. shocked that AM's offense has been this productive. Now, they're a, they're a hot and cold team. When they're on a roll, they've been a very productive offense, especially at home, as we said. But I thought Texas defense would, would play better than this in a yeah. short week. Well, you know, and it's funny because we talked about this today in the car ride. We said, you know, these short weeks can be the ultimate nullifier equalizer yeah. for games. You know, teams only have three full practices to get ready, particularly when you're on the road and you have to travel, even if it's just a bus trip mm -hmm. down the street. Mm -hmm. I mean, these teams that scheme for three, four days tops, that could be a real news. neutralizer. Good news, guys. Lamar Houston walking off. This is not a guy Texas can afford to lose with potentially huge championship games ahead Huskers a week from Saturday and if they win that it's on to Pasadena but Houston appears to be okay he is the key to the defense so they won't have him in there on fourth and three in the middle but a field goal attempt by Bullock try to cut it to seven connected earlier from 31 this from 23 Oh, he missed it. Just about a foot wide right. The whole place taking it for granted. That's an enormous miss with 3.05 to play. Still a 10-point game. You know what? He's on the right side. It just seems like that it's the hardest kick for kickers to make. And again, back to the game of inches. See if the Aggies begin to quickly spend timeouts here. Boy's going to throw in first down. Williams makes a man miss. Dodges another tackler and gets out across the 30. So Greg Davis not playing it safe on first down. I was just going to say, Greg Davis does not mind throwing short passes in these situations because in this offense, they're extension of the run games. This team throws the football less than five yards downfield as much as anybody. Well, it's because of Colt McCoy. Yeah. You know, the guy's 71% career passing guy. He's been hot and on fire lately. So you got confidence that your senior Heisman candidate is definitely not going to make a mistake. And Williams really emerging as a weapon. Only 26 catches coming in. Got off to a slow start this season. But tonight, 9 for 132. You see McCoy, senior leader, captain, winner, doing the smart thing, letting the play clock bleed all the way down. He'll snap this the final second. McCoy keeps it. And has a little crease and slides for about 9. That's tough. You can't really begin to spend timeouts, can you, when you give up nine yards on first down? Now, I'll ask you guys this question. You know, coming into this ball game, like in 05, Vince Young coming into this game, running and trying for the Heisman. How do you think the Colt McCoy has done in his Heisman bid tonight? Well, I think he's certainly helped his cause. And look at the last two years against the Aggies after losing in 06 and 07. Very rough stats in those two losses, but what a way to cap his career against their arch rivals. That adds up to nearly 500 yards offense. <laughs> and hand it off inside. This is Newton. And a first down to move the chains again. 
Hodges on the stop. So take it inside a minute 30. There's some great news from the Texas sidelines. Dion Beasley, the corner who was involved in that violent collision on the kickoff return, checked out okay. Nothing seriously wrong with the senior. And that is more good news for Texas. Boys, we had a good one here on this Thursday night. How about the Civil War next oh, week, huh? Man, out of West. Wait. Cannot wait for the Rose Bowl. You want to talk about one of the great rivalries in all of college football. That's Beasley, by the way, guys. Yep. Yeah, last year, 1,157 yards, 694 for Masoli and the Ducks as they spoiled the Beavers' Rose Bowl hopes. Now imagine this in state rivalry, the craziness of Arts Stadium. Rose Bowl alive for both teams. It doesn't get better than that. And, and one of the great venues in all of college oh, yeah. football, out in the stadium. But you talk about Sean Canfield, Craig. We were talking about the most improved player probably in the Pac-10. And this is the best running offense in the Pac-10 in Oregon. How about this is the best running defense against Oregon How about State. James stepping up for Oregon this year? Come out of nowhere. And you've got Jack West Rogers, again, probably the Pac-10 offensive player of the year. Both Great fast running backs from state, of, state Texas. of Texas. There you go. Quiz Rogers was not able to play against the Ducks in that blowout loss a year ago. He was injured. So hope you'll join us a week from tonight. Eugene McCoy just takes off again, continues to pad those rushing stats. Destroying his previous career high now, yeah. 172 on the ground, and and then we'll spend a timeout. But McCoy got seven. I, I thought in this football game, when Colt McCoy started running well early, and that quarterback zone read there that opened up Aggies defense, he got into the game. And what does this do to opposing defensive coaches now that are going to put the tape on and say, "Whoa, wait a second, well, Colt McCoy running this much, unbelievable." It was far from perfect, though, for Texas. And the Aggies really had some opportunities as big underdogs to get things going. Michael fumbling the football when they had momentum. Texas marched down for a touchdown. Ashigan yet another turnover into points. And then getting away, Kirkendall for the 47-yarder. You know, it's amazing. Even after racking up 532 yards against one of the top defenses in college football, this AM team is still going to go watch the tape, and they're going to say, you know what, guys, we left a lot of points on the field. And I, and I go back to last year, the development and the improvement that Texas A&M has made as a team to be able to compete on the football field versus last Thanksgiving. McCoy, hesitation, takes a loss on that run. Aggies will fall to six and six bowl eligible perhaps headed for the the Texas Bowl down there in Houston against Navy Potentially also to Shreveport against an SEC opponent And no big mystery our Wrangler five-star player of the game Colt McCoy with his 44th career win as a starter Is there a, a hotter quarterback right now in college football over the last six games than that guy? None, none. and you know what when you talk about now that he is the all-time careers winner passing David Green from Georgia you know, he just keeps adding on. He's had a tremendous football career. When you ask Mac Brown who the best quarterback he ever coached was, he's very hesitant because, of course, Vince Young was 30-2. and two. Of course, Vince Young won a national championship. The only thing Colt McCoy has not done that Vince has is win, the, win championships. Well, McCoy is one chance. win away from yeah. playing for a national championship. They get past the Huskers. Coverage of the Dick Sporting Good NIT. Season tip-off Friday on ESPN, the 13th-ranked Connecticut Huskies against the Duke Blue Devils, who are number seven in the championship game. Friday, 5 o'clock Eastern time, part of Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. McCoy, by the way, will finish up one of the most productive quarterbacks in college football history. He's already in the top ten all-time total offense, passing yards, touchdowns, and has the number one career completion percentage of anybody. Major Applewhite there has played in a lot of these AM Texas games, giving him some counsel on third and seven. And the Longhorns have hit 600 yards in total offense tonight. They'll lose a couple there with the victory formation kneel down. It was a fight. The highest scoring AM Texas game in history goes to the number three team. And now. Over to Dallas, and the Cornhuskers trying to win a conference championship and position themselves.
for January 7th in the BCS championship game. How about this? For the first time in school history, Texas finishes 12-0 in the regular season. Well, and, that's a, and I think that's, again, another reflection of Colt McCoy's leadership. But Mac Brown, I remember him two springs ago having John Childs rotating in spring practice, competing with Colt McCoy, trying to get Colt's attention. I think he got his attention, right? Success. Aggie's showing that there is reason to believe in a, a bright future here in College Station, finishing at 6-6. Six and six. Well, we enjoyed it. I want to salute our entire TV family here in College Station. Been away from their families and coming together as we always do. Great team all season long, and Colt McCoy, quarterback of a great team, is with Aaron. I've bit, my, I've bit myself. Well, Colt's telling me right now, he just asked me if I could see him. Yeah, I saw that. How physical was this game for you tonight? Uh, it was tough. You know, we expected that coming in. I, I'm so thankful uh, to get a win uh, for the seniors. Uh, I thank God. You know, it's Thanksgiving. There's so much to be thankful for. My family, friends, but I'm especially thankful for this team and Coach Brown. And, uh, I thank the good Lord. He's an awesome God. Cole, by the way, asked me if I could see that uh, that sore on his lip. He just bit his lip. A huge night for you. What was key for you? We just wanted to do and take what they told us to do. Uh, the running game, I didn't really expect to do that tonight, but it was there, and we just made it work. That's the good thing about our offense is that uh, when times get tough, we just find a way, and tonight, that's what we did. What were you thinking? every time Texas A&M would take the field, and they seemed to be responding to what you were doing as well. Uh, hats off to them. Gerard Johnson played a great game. Uh, he's a tremendous quarterback, uh, and, and the whole A&M uh, team played well tonight, but uh, we're fortunate to come out on top and, and just thankful. What are you looking forward to the most in going up against Nebraska next weekend? Well, it's going to be fun. Another challenge. Uh, any anybody we're playing the Big 12 is going to be tough, and you know we just got to go back home, enjoy this tonight, enjoy Thanksgiving, uh, and get ready for Nebraska. Congratulations. Great night. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah. Nice hug from the coach, Mac Brown. And the Longhorns with one more showcase game for Colt McCoy. He made a big Heisman statement tonight, 479 total yards, and he accounts for five touchdowns in the 10-point win. Well, it was fun. Texas shootout in this great rivalry. Hope you enjoyed it. Sports Center's up next. John Buchagrass and John Anderson, or Steve Buchagrass and John Anderson. Steve Ruthum, two guys will take you home. <laughs> ESPN News has post-game extra, and we'll be back with more. I blew that. Otherwise, fun night. <laughs>